Happy Saturday and welcome to this edition of the Lead Off heard here live every Saturday morning on the Peak One Sports Network. I'm Ashton, and as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, Tony and Landon are not in studio. They are in Galveston, Texas. How is the coast, boys? Oh, we're enjoying a beautiful morning here, right on the water, about, what, 20 feet from the water here? Uh, right, on the, right on the canal, so. Yeah, here. Beautiful weather down here this weekend. Yeah, here in DFW right now, it's supposed to be pretty good this weekend. Uh, it's like high 50s right now, low 60s, but high 50s, low 60s in on the coast is completely different. It's, it's just yeah. more beautiful. And I'm not going to complain because we went from uh, intense summer to pretty cold winter, like nothing. And now we're back to normal weather. But, uh, it looks, I mean, yeah, from this shot, it looks beautiful. Pretty wild down here this weekend. Pretty wild down here this weekend. Uh, they have some big bike rally. Apparently, this is like the second largest motorcycle rally uh, outside of Sturges. <clears throat> and they're, they're like anticipating like 100,000 bikes down here this weekend. So wow. We actually drove around a little bit yesterday, and uh, there's a lot of bikes. A whole lot of bikes. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. That's a pretty big crowd. Not as big as the uh, Rangers World Series Celebration Parade. That's right. Uh, near five, uh, estimated 500 to 700,000 people in downtown Arlington. Uh, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's talk about a couple of our sponsors. Uh, Betalytics has been a longtime sponsor with us. Don't bet with your gut. Just let Betalytics do all the hard work. Uh, they use AI machines to go through algorithms and trends to get you uh, accurate player props, projections, all kinds of stuff. Go to betalytics.com and use uh, promo code PEAK1 to save uh, 25% off when you sign up right now. Um, we also have a, a sponsor that's been with us just for a few weeks, Shank It Golf. It's a guy, they have some really cool golf apparel, uh, laid back, kind of crazy, wacky hats and polos and all kinds of stuff. You go there, the link, uh, our referral link is below in the description box. Use promo code PEAK1 and you get uh, 15% off when you sign up or when you place your order. So shank it golf. Go check them out. Um, and guys, I mean, the Rangers won the World Series. What can, you know, I, I, I didn't plan on having a lot of show prep because that's pretty much what we were talking about. As you can see, Tony and, and me, I also have Rangers, Rangers apparel on. Um what are your thoughts on the series now that we're, you know, about three days removed from uh, them winning it all? Well, I think it's finally sank in. I think it took a couple days to really sink in that they won. Um, obviously, I'm down here wearing it in enemy territory in the in the Houston yeah. market. But, uh, man, she couldn't be more excited, you know, for us especially. You and I, you know, being kids growing up being Ranger fans and all the disappointment that there always was. Um, and it, it's, it's nothing better, especially when you have, you're so disappointed in what the Cowboys have done in the, you know, at least the last decade that they've had a, a solid team that could, could compete. Uh, it's, it's nice to finally, you know, have that, you know, we had the Mavs not too long, too many years ago, but it's nice to finally bring a championship back to the DFW area. Yeah, the uh, front office went out and got a lot of pieces the last couple of seasons. Um, we were expecting this to this contention to start probably next year, uh, but you got a lot of uh, a lot of production from some of your young guys, from Josh Young and Evan Carter, Dolis Garcia, um, and some of your. I mean. Every time a pitcher went down, DeGrom goes down, you go get Scherzer, Montgomery, Montgomery. I mean, uh, Scherzer goes down uh, multiple times. You have Uvalde go down multiple times. This, this team has just been uh, resilient. I mean, it's there's not a, a fluky sense to this. I mean, yeah, at the beginning of the season, you probably would have thought, I mean, there's no, there's no way. Um, how they've performed this season, it was probably still an outside chance. But you're like, okay, I could, I could see. I mean, we were kind of all expecting, like, not expecting, but really hoping and thinking it's possible for them to win. Um, they just did it in an improbable way, winning 10, 10 or is it 11 straight on the road? Didn't it end up being 10 straight? I don't even remember. 
Um, it's it's just 11 straight, 11 straight. It's just a ridiculous record that, I mean, unless they expand the playoffs, there's, it can, it's impossible for it to be broken because you have to be a fifth or sixth seed to do it. And, and just win every road game possible and make it to game sevens. And uh, it's, it's the improbable way they did it and the resilience. It's, it's very non fluky. If, if you, if you will for use that, that term that it's not like it just came out of nowhere and okay. They, they like, even with the Mavericks, I mean, we got them were mad when they blew up the whole thing, but that wasn't it really a championship roster. You know, they kind of got hot at the right time. Not that this is, yeah. you know, bona fide championship <clears throat> roster, but they're young. They have a lot of talent. Um, it, it wasn't something that like, well, you just can't sustain that kind of success. Maybe winning all those road games. But uh, the reason, you know, they, they, they dealt with a lot of injuries and were still able to make it to the playoff. I mean, who knows if Corey Seager doesn't get hurt on his two extended stints. Who, if Josh Young doesn't get hurt, if... DeGrom doesn't miss the, you know, most of the season. If Max Scherzer doesn't miss a lot of time, all they had to do was win one more game and you get a bye week or a bye well, series. I mean, look at it. Look at it this way also is if, you know, we don't see Evan Carter if it's not due to an injury. He doesn't come up and he was a huge part of this postseason run that they had. You know, the, I think this, without the injuries, the way they work out and the way that, they enter the postseason. I don't. I don't. I don't know if we see this same result. I, you know, everything happened for a reason, and and this is a team. And doesn't it look like they're built to compete for a lot of years now? Yeah, they. I mean, the few weaknesses they have, like you can say, starting pitching, depending mm-hmm. on you know how Scherzer's going to be. He's he's a year older. If Degrom, I mean, he's not even coming back till August, and what will he be? Uh, really, it's just the bullpen who who stepped up and was able to win this uh, without giving up any runs. But I mean, when you look at it, there there's not like okay, we have to go solidify this spot in the batting order or solidify solidify this defensive position. It's really like, I mean, sure, upgrade some positions, but you have uh, minor leaguers in the farm system coming up to help with that too. But you know, maybe get it one starting pitcher and then just get a few bullpen guys. And then it's, it's like your weakness that you've had to overcome all season uh, seems like, okay, that's not your weakness anymore. You know, this, this team has never had uh, long periods where they haven't been able to score runs. I mean, there was a, a, a part in the, I think it was, the, it was the World Series or ALCS where it was like three games and then their seven, eight, nine hitter had most of the RBIs and most of the hits and, you know, I think it was Josh Young, Evan Carter and Garcia, probably. I don't, I don't remember what it must've been the ALCS because Garcia and Carter hit higher up uh, in the world series, but from top to down, it's just, it's just a very good, uh, very good lineup offensively. And you're not really losing any big pieces. Like there, there are a few pieces that, you know, look big that, like, hey, they turned out to be pretty good players because of all the injuries, but for the most part, you're keeping all your starters uh, from the fielding side. Yeah, do we think we see Evan Carter in center field next season? Most likely, it's speaking. Unless Cody Bellinger is a free agent next year. So if they decide they want to sign a free agent and go get him, that could mix up everything in the outfield but as of right now no free agent signings yeah they'll be the center fielder and you have uh Wyatt Langford coming up as well yeah assuming they bring him up too which I don't think that if I, at some point I think at some point during the season he will come up it all it just depends yeah. I mean if he if he keeps killing it in the minors so is that um, somewhere we'd see him land in the in left field yeah, Carter's I mean, I think Evan Carter was right. gonna. The plan is to play center field. You just didn't want to bring him up in that situation, put him right in, as your center fielder. But uh, he's he's proven himself out there. He's proven himself in the lineup, uh, in the in the batting order. And uh, I don't know Tavares's 
contract situation, but um, I think you you put uh, I think you put Evan Carter uh, in center field starting. Uh, honestly, day one, like why wouldn't you? Like, he's got the speed, he's got the arm, he's got the defense. No question on his bat. Um, and you could put Tavares in left, or maybe you you make a free agent signing. We'll see how – I'm sure White Langford will get an invite to spring training and and see how he does at that level. Yeah, I think this uh, this Rangers team, you know, as fun as it was this year, I think it's going to be even more fun going forward to watch and see them to continue to develop because, like we talked about, they're such a young team. Uh, and, and when you have Bruce Bochy coming back, I mean, so many of the postseason – moves that he made you know yes they were a talented team but everyone in the postseason is talented these are the best of the best that make it it comes down to manager you know moves and, and how they manage a game uh, and i think that was proven and shown exactly how him and mike maddox manage this team and this pitching staff because you you didn't have a pitching staff that anyone expected to compete in the postseason especially on the road like you said i mean can, can we pretty much say that home field advantage in major sports is is not really a thing? It like, doesn't really matter. The Rangers not just prove that the home field advantage really doesn't matter that much? Uh, maybe overrated a little bit. I mean, it's got to matter to some extent. I don't know if it's uh, the crowds maybe. I, I think the crowd plays a point in like your big, you know, uh, Yankees uh, in baseball maybe – well, ask the Astros how that worked out. Yeah, yeah. Ask, well, ask Baltimore how that worked out. Yeah, Obviously, I mean, you're elite. I, I think it's more like, hey, day. you wake up in your this in your bed <coughs> in the morning. Your routine's the same. You drive to the ballpark. It's your ballpark. I, I think that can play into it. But you play so many games, uh, eight, 81 road games. You play. Um, I I think. In the playoffs, the intensity is is up regardless, and uh, if, I guess for the Rangers, it did matter. You know, obviously it did matter. They they did better. What did they win? One, no, two get two home games. One in Baltimore and one, or one against Baltimore and one against Arizona. They didn't win any against uh, Houston, and obviously didn't even play at home against Tampa. So you go like a two and four road uh, home record, and then a, an eleven and zero. Uh, is that the right math? Whatever, uh, eleven and zero road record. Uh, for the Rangers, it doesn't matter. I I think um, in the right, you know, they had a lot of veterans on this team. You know, for such a young team, I mean, Degrom's not pitching, Scherzer's not pitching, but they've been in those situations. They're still. Uh, or at least Scherzer not pitching, you know, in the last couple of games, but they're still in the locker room. They're still in the in the in the dugout, leading these guys. And Simeon, I mean, he doesn't have the playoff experience necessarily, but you know, he's thirty three. He's been out around a while. Seager's played in you know just about every season outside of last season of his career has been in the playoffs. He has the experience. And then you mentioned Bochi. Uh, he's the ultimate experience taking this third team to a world series and then winning his fourth. So he obviously has the experience and even um, pitching coach, Mike Maddox, like he, he left the Rangers, mm-hmm. but he was there in 2010 and 2011 um, to help, you know, help these pitchers out um, and know yeah, the situation. Mentioning Mike Maddox again, he, uh, I don't think he's gotten the credit, especially nationally that he deserves with these guys. Um, you know, he's he's the very game plan guy. He's he's done a very good job through the postseason. He's proven that he's the guy that's going to be the game plan. He's not going to work on your mechanics as much. He's not going to help you, you know, work on, hey, let's spin this ball more. He's going with the game plan. Is What do you bring to the table? How are we going to attack these guys? And you could see every time that uh, through the postseason that an opposing team would bring in a pinch hitter, they would they would game plan around that. They would either switch their pitcher, you know, make a move to switch to get the right matchup, or you would see him instantly go out to the mound and give him a full scouting report on who was coming up. So yeah. the, you know, this Rangers pitching staff, he set them up to succeed. 
they had all the tools they needed. All they had to do was perform, and they did just enough to perform and, and took them all the way. Yeah, and this is a deep pitching staff. Uh, outside, I mean, obviously outside of DeGrom and before you got Scherzer, you didn't really have that bona fide ace, but you had uh, a couple of guys who, who probably could be an ace on most teams, um, but they're probably closer to a second, you know, number two, but you didn't even have that, okay, here's your fourth and fifth pitcher to, to run the line. You, you had like six pitchers who were – twos and threes on most rosters on most pitching staffs um and then on some of them maybe even a one it was very deep where you you saw basically three pitchers didn't even you know from three decently successful pitchers from the regular season didn't even start a game in here because you didn't need him it was like it wasn't like okay who's going to start all these games it's like man who's who are we going to sit down you see john gray had a great season but he didn't. He wasn't one of the starters. He just kept. I mean, he, he came off the. He came out of the bullpen, uh, and did great in in these situations. And he's going to be a legend in in the in the Texas Rangers organization and the history and the in the eyes of the fans forever because he was part of this World Series championship. Um, but you have Montgomery and Uvalde basically doing it for you. Um, Scherzer did have. Um, a couple of okay starts where he kept you, you know, he started and gave up some runs um, coming he off the of rehab. Eat up innings, which was important, was being able to eat up a few innings. Yeah, because Scherzer some time for this could, bullpen. Yeah, because Scherzer, Scherzer pitching three or four innings in a game is three or four innings yeah. your bullpen doesn't have to pitch. Exactly. Uh, and Andrew Heaney, you know, he, he was a successful starter also, the, but he came out of the bullpen. With the depth of the pitching staff, uh, I mean, just the depth of this team. You know, you had guys being able to come in. Um, you know, Jankowski able to step up. You know, and when when he was asked to come in, and we saw him pinch run several times, and then in turn that put him in the field, and he made some solid plays holding his own. But when you see Adolis Garcia go down, and in the same game Max Scherzer goes down, you know, I think as a Rangers fan, you were definitely worried about what moves they were going to make, who was going to take that, and I think. Initially, you see Jankowski in the lineup, and you're like, uh, you know, we're definitely, it's a drop-off. I mean, that kid stepped up and, I mean, maybe had one of the best games of his professional career, you know, just getting on base, just doing what he had to do, driving in a couple runs and and, and making some great plays. I mean, we saw him make a sliding catch, you know, him and Simeon chasing a ball in the World Series, and he makes this beautiful sliding catch at the foul line uh, just before colliding with Simeon. I mean, this, this Rangers team, they had a lot of heart, and, and I think they had depth, and I think that's what makes them such a good team for the future. You know, next season, uh, fortunately, well, unfortunately for them, they're going to have so much weight on their backs to, to run it back and to be able to repeat. But I think they have this team, and they have the manager that they can do that. I mean, we've talked about what you, know, what you think, a couple couple pitching moves, you know, build this staff up a little bit more. Yeah, just open moves. Yeah, bullpen, uh, you know, if you find the right guy as a starter, just because you have the question mark with Scherzer now, um, he dealt with a couple of injuries uh, in the last couple of months. So, you know, he's going to have that question mark over him. He's also not a young guy. It's going to, you know, coming out. I, I'm sure Max Scherzer is your opening <clears throat> day starter. I would assume they would run him out as an ace because, I mean, whatever he's dealing with now, I don't think was yeah. just major. Just get healthy. Yeah, I think he was probably going to sit out see, a week. Landon, when do we see Degrom come back? We're going to miss him most That's of the season. Not to like playoff start. I think yeah, it's yeah, so, August like at best case, and then even like we saw with Scherzer in a couple of starts after coming back, Degrom's not going to be Degrom probably until playoffs. I think that's your your move is don't even bring Degrom back too early um, unless you're like battling to get into the playoffs, but. Just bring him back in time where he can get ready and get his, uh, you know, just get ready for the playoffs to pitch in the playoffs. What's going to be really important for this Rangers team is to get some early season wins, is not to come out flat, uh, win the games you're supposed to win. Um, don't don't wear yourself out trying to win games you're not supposed to win, um, and don't put yourself in a position again like you did last season where you're having a or this past season where you're having a battle to get into the playoffs. 
get those early wins, beat the teams you're supposed to beat. And, and I think that's a big thing that we don't – that isn't talked about as much in baseball is it's kind of managing that load through such a long season is when do we want it? Well, let's get the early wins so then we're not having to overuse – any position towards the end of the season. Yeah. Put yourself in a spot where, you know, and we saw the Rangers. I mean, they came out hot this this past season, uh, winning early. Obviously, the injury bug kind of hit them mid-season. But it, it's almost like they ran out of steam. And when that was all the worry was they were running out of steam and then ended up losing the division. And you think, man, they just – they came out too hot. They, they, they came out with too much energy and just ran flat. Luckily, they found that next gear and, and were really able to turn it on and played the way they were supposed to play when it mattered in the postseason. Let's take uh, let's hold on that. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, and when we come back, we'll talk uh, more Rangers World Series champs. Be right back. With two decades of designing graphics experience, Apogee Graphics provides a wide variety of print options to meet your advertising needs. Visit ApogeeGraphics.com and take your vision to new heights. All right, welcome back here uh, on the lead off on the Peak One Sports Network. Thanks for letting us get you ready for your sports weekend. And Tony, you were talking about um, getting early wins uh, and kind of setting setting yourself up so you have that room for error. Where if you go on a losing streak, as the Rangers did a couple of times, that uh, you have that room to where you're not getting knocked out or getting in a big deficit to to have to use a lot of these players and, you know, bring DeGrom back early or God forbid you have other injuries, which happens that you have to rush them back too quickly. Um, we forget in 182 or 162 game season that, you know, the little games here and there, but they tied the Astros for the division. Astros had the tiebreaker. One game would have won the division. And how many yeah. times did we see them give up three, four, five run leads late in games? You take one of those games that they they had a big lead um, and they win the division. Where and of course we're I'm not saying that would have been better. Who knows what would have happened then? You know, I think part of them um, sweeping Baltimore and doing good against the Astros was they got hot at the right time, and that included going to Tampa and winning two games, and then going to Baltimore and just they didn't have that big break, and um, we saw that the Braves couldn't handle that very well. We saw the Astros lost. I think they lost game one. Obviously, Baltimore got swept. The Dodgers, That it, it seemed like it was more beneficial for these wild card teams that had to play in that first uh, in that first series because they got hot. They weren't sitting, you know. Ideally, you want the time off to set up your pitching <clears throat> staff and get everything, get everybody rested. But in this case, it didn't seem to work. And I think it, it's a testament to how the 
especially the Rangers. And I guess the Diamondbacks as well. They were in that same situation, right? I mean, they didn't. They, it, it was all they about swept, how they managed. Yeah, they swept the they Dodgers those, when the Rangers yeah, swept they, it's Baltimore. how they managed those extra games they had to play with their pitching staff. Um, I think both of those teams, I mean, this this very well could be. You know, they were both, I would say, underdog teams. Nobody expected them to be in the World Series. We had, you know, speaking of the Rangers and Diamondbacks, this very well could be a rematch next season. These are both, I mean, very closely matched teams. I think young teams, teams that had some too. starters. Young, you know, young stars. Very young, very hot offenses. You know, I think that's both of them are in a situation where their pitching staffs aren't quite there. Uh, obviously, they did what they had to do. I think that's a lot of managerial moves. But... These are both very two closely matched teams. I think I expected to see a little more competitiveness between them. Um, I think Bruce Bochy proved that, you know, his experience in the in postseason and in this league that, you know, that was the difference in this series and for them to only allow one win to the Diamondbacks and to play so dominantly. Uh, but I felt like these two, those two teams were much more closely matched than probably any other postseason matchup we've seen. And very similar um, paths to the World Series. I mean, Mm -hmm. the Rangers beat Tampa. They beat uh, Milwaukee, two teams who had really good seasons. Uh, And then they both go on to the next series and sweep. The Rangers sweep Baltimore. They sweep L.A. Baltimore had the best record in the American League. Uh, the Dodgers had the best record for a lot of the time. You know they were a very hot team, um, and then they both go to the their their uh, <clears throat> respectable championship series and beat the defending championship series for both. You know the Phillies were the NL champs, Astros AL champs, and these teams uh, beat both of them in both of them were in seven games as well. So. Uh, really similar paths once they made it to the playoffs and uh, the Diamondbacks were hot early in the season. They were one of those surprise teams with the Rangers. Uh, I believe Pittsburgh and Miami had even uh, started off pretty hot. Pittsburgh yeah. kind of fizzled out. I thought the Diamondbacks were fizzling out, but they came back late in the year. They were actually, you know, beat the Rangers. Um, I think three, one, I know they played two, two game series against them and then they were swept by the Astros similar where they, the Rangers weren't swept, but they lost two of three to Seattle. A very disappointing series because you lose the division there. Um, mm-hmm. Both teams go in kind of in the playoffs, kind of limping, and then they just get hot at the right time. Both, you know, obviously we talked about the Rangers on the road. The Diamondbacks had won a lot of games on the road. I think they were um, undefeated on the road until game one of the games in Philly, and then both winning. Um, up until the World Series, had won every game they had scored first in. The Rangers ended up winning it all uh, that way. But very similar teams that I agree. I don't know how uh, the Diamondbacks' farm system is, uh, but they're rostered right now. And again, I don't know their contract situations either, but uh, it seems that it's very possible you could they, they could be battling for World Series uh, appearances yeah. in the upcoming seasons. <clears throat> You know, we talked about with the Rangers especially, but this this holds true for the Diamondbacks. You know, once both of these teams got past the first round, that wild card round, they were playing with house money. Nobody expected them to be more than that. You know, I think we kind of expected the Rangers could be a team that could find their way into the playoffs this season. If not, you know, it would have been just a few games out. Um, I think but you thought that they would get in and at least compete in the first round, but that was probably about as far as they were going to go. So once they, you know, the Rangers got past Tampa, there was, they were playing with house money. Anything after that was good, you know, and I think any Ranger fan would have been perfectly happy with, even if they would have gone to Baltimore and lost that series, I think any Rangers fan would have been just happy with this, the way this season turned out. Um, I think that's why it brings so much excitement to, you know, to bring so much excitement to this town when you win a championship and you see it with the parade that was yesterday and, and just, I mean, you, we all went to the, to Academy at, you know, 10 o'clock at night to, to wait in line, you know, and then people were waiting in line for, I think up till like 2 AM to get their Rangers world series gear. That's, that's what you see when you have teams that aren't supposed to be there. that weren't there. 
you know, with Houston last year, they were supposed to be there. Everyone yeah. expected them to be that team. You know, that was a big thing. So it's different. I think the feeling's different when you know a team's supposed to be there. Now, will it be a little different next season yeah. when the Rangers make it? Probably so. I think, will we all go and wait in line for World Series gear? Probably so, because that was fun. But I think the hype around the team might be slightly different in the postseason because now you expect them to be there. Yeah, and you never, you know, you know, it's your first championship. You never forget your first. And yeah. um, it's exciting, too, because, like I said, it was a surprise, but it wasn't completely out of nowhere. We saw this coming, at least being contenders, not winning the World Series, but being contenders – probably next season yeah they were one year ahead so that's what makes it exciting. it's not like okay hey we we did it um this is a now we're gonna go yeah. in 80 games next season you know um we you know we expect them to compete for the division you know the astros are still good at, and and seattle's pretty good we're not gonna say hey they they should win the division. They probably will be favored, I think, to win the division. It's definitely going to be one of those divisions. I mean, it's going to be a fight to the end of the division. Now, I don't know that Houston's going to put the exact same team back on the field. Yeah. Um, I think and we'll that see what, what the Rangers look much as well. different. Yeah. Um, and this is, I mean, this is going to be an exciting season. We saw all saw in 2011 after they had made it in 2010 that fans were excited. You know, you're, you're just going to have – mostly sellouts pretty much uh, yep. most season. It's going to be exciting on random Tuesday night games. You're going to be the defending champs. You have the all-star game coming to Texas uh, this season. And Bochi's going to code. He won. He's the champion in the American league. So he'll be one, he's American going to be league. the coach of the American manager, league all-star yeah. team. Uh, so there's a lot of excitement around this <clears> year, um, but I know when they because we thought they were going to be in the division series anyways because they led uh, the division for so long so it was obviously disappointing when they lost so making the playoffs wasn't enough for me i was thinking okay you have to get past tampa because we thought you know we were kind of looking ahead placing you in the division series already once they made it the decision in the division i was thinking just don't get swept put up a competitive series i don't think you're going to be baltimore same thing when they played the astros I hate would hate them to lose the Astros, but I mean, come on, don't go out and get swept by the Astros. And then they uh, went out and won two. And then when they lost three, I'm like, okay, just at least take it to a game seven. Don't lose four straight. And then the World Series was the same thing. Like I, I couldn't. I think it was from 2011. That disappointment is still in my head. Like, okay, you should win this, but let's make it a competitive series. I'm okay losing if we. Um, well, thinking that now, obviously, or not thinking that now, obviously at the time in my head saying you should win this, but you know, don't lose it in a devastating way, but also don't get swept. Yeah. Uh, cause we're just playing with house money now. Let's look, do something to look forward to and getting swept in the world like, series or the at ALCS. That point, you have nothing, you, you, they have nothing to lose at that point. Yeah. So why not go all out? You know, and I think those. Those were kind of the moves you saw made managerial. They that was they they had nothing to lose, and everybody knowing, else had something. Knowing to lose. that you're Houston still competing, to knowing lose. that you're still competing year after year, like you're kind of excited, like, yeah. hey, we're gonna be contenders or should be contenders for a few years. Um, so it's not like if you lose, you're like, well, that was our shot. Like I, I kind of felt like, um. In 2010, I didn't expect them to go back because 2010 was really out of nowhere. They hadn't done anything in a while. 2009 was an okay season, so it wasn't a huge surprise that you made it to the, made the playoffs and won the division. But just going out and uh, beating the Rays, beating the Yankees, and making it to the World Series, then you lose. You're like, okay, that's disappointing. That's fun. We'll have a good season next year. But I don't think anybody expected them to go back and make it again. Um, but this season, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I think they have a good team, and, and obviously we'll see. Um, before we run out of time, I don't even know where we're at right now on the clock, but uh, let's jump into uh, some NBA because the in-season tournament, the first ever in-season tournament for the NBA Cup started. It tipped off last night or yesterday in general. Um, weird, weird situation, you know, we <laughs> We heard that it was coming for a few years, and now that it's here, it's kind of odd. Um, I know they do it in other countries and other sports, but 
uh it's weird like in the middle not even in the middle it's like the season just started last week you know every, every team has a few games and then all of a sudden now you're in this in-season tournament which i mean what's the payoff if you win i still is there any payoff like i know these games count towards your regular season schedule and then if you make the final eight i think so these are part these are part of the 82 games yeah so every in this? yeah every team uh, there are <clears throat> Six groups, five teams to a group. Yeah, and then every team you know, plays everybody once. You have two home games, two road games, and and those games count towards your regular season. So the Mavericks were four and zero. They lost last night in the first game of that group stage. They're four and one now. Um, and then whoever makes it out of those groups, I think it's how many groups did I say there were six, and then one. Um, one wild card team from each divi- from each conference to make eight, and then you just the uh, play the first series, and then the final four are in Vegas for the NBA Cup. I think those games because really it's only three games for the team that makes it to the championship round. I, I don't think those games count towards your regular season because that would make a different number of games. But um, I don't like. It's cool, I guess, but what's what's the payoff? I know they did it early in the season, so you like you don't have any injuries. You make it part of the regular season, so you don't have teams sit people out uh, and do low management. I can definitely see that if we did this in March or something. Yeah. Um, and then really to win it all, you just have to play those extra three games. So I don't know, because um, I thought when they were talking about it, is like, hey, you win it, you get an automatic playoff spot. And maybe that still is the case, but I haven't seen it. I think it's just, hey, it's an in-season tournament just to – I don't even know what the point is, honestly, because you still have the big matchups. I know they talked about this with college football before they started the playoff, was just having in-season, early-season playoffs, and then you'll see Georgia and Michigan or you know or whatever the teams that before they we got the playoff. Uh, but the NBA, you already have all these great matchups. You get to make the schedule. You can make whatever you want. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I'm uh, I'm watching because it's a regular season game, but I I don't know. And then the the courts are they make the courts for the home. You know, they're all kind of the same design, um, where it's one basic color, I guess, of the team, and then the middle down the court is long ways is a different color. I find it hideous. I don't know. We I was watching the Mavericks game last night. So it was blue. The court was blue and then a yellow strip down the middle. And then I saw the the Bulls court was red. I just find it hard to watch. Yeah, I think some of these are definitely kind of out there. It, it's pretty uh, gimmicky that, to me. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's so that you it signifies that this is special Different from the regular yeah. season yeah there's something about this uh i mean i think it's cool it's it's a big move it's a big move to change all your courts out i mean that landon and i are looking at them here i mean the sun's the, one's the, pretty cool the gray ones are pretty cool I, I, new it, orleans is hideous i San think is terrible is the, the point of this throws to... me off is new york the Knicks. Yeah. So when I first looked at it, I'm like, man, my screen's blurry. And then I zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. I'm like, oh, no, they have, like, multiple layers stacked of that New York design, and it just makes it it look – maybe it's different live. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think some of these are okay. Uh, I think it's cool that they at least make them all look the same, like having the trophy in the middle and then is that the yeah. trophy in the in the yeah, as well. Side, yeah. yeah, I mean uh, – it... I think this is I think this is for – it's coming different. I mean, I, I would think Landon's going to have a different perspective than we would. I think this is to help build this new young fan base. Um, yeah. I think that through all sports, you kind of see this generationally that they're trying to change things for that new generation of sports fan. For sure. This is my old man get off the lawn uh, mentality coming out. Like, I, I, I don't mind it. I'm not saying, like, uh, why did you do this? This is stupid. Why are you changing things? It's fine because, I mean, it counts towards the regular season. Who cares? Um, I'm just wondering why, you know, why they did it. I guess get a younger fan base. I mean, it 
it's definitely feels like European soccer ish where they have multiple leagues and seasons and cups and all kinds of stuff where it's hard to keep up with if you don't grow up uh, watching European soccer and just international soccer in general because I know uh, you, you have so many different tournaments and qualifyings and friendlies and that's what it kind of seems like although they didn't go all out with that because the games still count towards your overall regular season record. Um, and then you win, I guess you just, you just have bragging rights. I guess it helps the ratings early on. I, I would have thought they should have done it a few more weeks in. I know, I guess they want to do the month of November into December. Uh, but it's still kind of early on in the season. There's still, there's still hype. Like people are excited. Basketball this tournament running. I saw all through November and then the championship or the NBA cup game, whatever is. So what do they do once December the team 9th? is eliminated from that, this? That's what I'm thinking. Are they, are they just taking basketball off for November and early December? And then, I mean, I guess I could have yeah, looked right. at the schedule, the Maverick schedule, uh, because they really just have the only guaranteed the four games early on. Then I guess they're off, which I guess if you play every few days, it'll probably last so the teams that get eliminated and aren't in the the final eight would I guess get a few weeks off or a couple of weeks off at least. It seems so. It might be beneficial if if there's no benefit of making the eight, other than winning the the NBA Cup. Then, well, I don't know. Maybe that's why they. You know, I I would think you'd say, hey, let's just unless you want to win the NBA Cup, we're going for the NBA championship. Um, hold out, not win, and then you get a few weeks off. But I guess that's a, a benefit to the NBA for having it so early in the season that players don't need rest, teams don't need rest. But to me, if it's like a ratings grab, the World Series just ended. People are going to go watch bat more basketball. I would say, what you know, how long into a basketball season or any sports season do you start thinking? Uh, you the excitement kind of wears off unless your team's winning or whatever that um that you come back for ratings when you do the NBA cup or NBA tournament whatever it's whatever they call it uh but i guess it makes more sense to do it just a couple of weeks in because then nobody's resting their starters nobody's losing on purpose you're still yeah i mean it looks like uh, the entire first week of december the mavericks don't have a game scheduled yeah so i think it week, said so. december 9th was a championship so, so yeah, you play so four games, games are, in November. Scheduled, so this isn't like a true bracket. I mean, these are all scheduled. Well, it's it's like games. the world. It's like the World Cup, or something like that. Everybody's in a group. You're in group stages right now. You play everybody in your group, and then whoever win the champion of the group goes on. There's six six groups. Six times five thirty. Yeah, six groups, and each champion goes to the final eight, and then they take a wild card from each conference to, to finalize the eight teams. Then it goes to a bracket. Once you're down to eight, you have a bracket. So it's very similar to world cup and most things like that, where you're just playing a group stage round Robin. You play the other four teams in your group, whoever wins goes and uh, moves on. And then in, unless you're a wild card, you you're eliminated. And honestly, it would probably take a few years for, for fans to really care about your team winning. Like, honestly, if the Mavericks don't win, they just get some rest. You know, I'm not too worried about it. Now, in a few years, maybe the intensity builds up, the excitement builds up, bragging rights, hey, we won the NBA Cup. Maybe you start caring then. Um, and, I, and I'm sure the players care and, and want to win and all that. I'm sure there's bonuses and, you know, money and stuff involved uh, for the champions. But as a fan, you know, I mean, I guess that'd be cool if, if your team wins, but honestly, I'm okay with them. You know, you want them to win the games because they count towards the total schedule. But, like, if you go 3-1 and one and the one team goes 4-0 and, oh and they get in the – you're like, I'm okay not making the, the final eight because now my team yeah. gets a month off or a few weeks off. Yeah. I don't know. Let me know y'all's thoughts. Uh, anybody listening? comment y'all's thoughts on it maybe y'all know more about this than i did um honestly i thought the nba tournament wasn't coming until next year and then i saw it a couple of days ago or yesterday i think um 
on uh, on the other sports network we're not going to talk about. I saw them uh, promoting it and talking about it, and uh, and that's when they kind of broke it down what it was, but they didn't say, like, I okay, you just get bragging rights in a cup if you win. For us, is we were definitely tied up the past month to six weeks with Rangers baseball yeah. and the hype there, so I think that makes – a difference for us that so we got to catch ourselves you know people that are in sports and have this sports network you know we we get sidetracked as well in in certain things when it's your hometown team so we're definitely going to have a little catching up to do as far as the nba goes uh, but i you know i gotta say i'm excited about the nba as well you know this was you know just finishing up that time where all sports were playing now baseball's fizzling out uh, hockey's you know, ramping got, up you have the nba cup you got hockey, and... NBA, got the NFL, you know, the, the races for divisions are starting to heat up and, and it runs towards the playoffs in the next two months. Uh, but, man, even something really big, we got NCAA football still. And don't forget about that. You know, now we're getting to that season where we're going to start seeing some big divisional or conference matchups. Yeah. A lot of 11 a.m. games today. Um, Ohio State at Rutgers. I don't know if they're at Rutgers. Ohio State, Rutgers play. Uh, number twenty-five, Kansas State's playing Texas without Quinn Ewers too. So that's yeah. Who who knows what could happen in that game? Kansas State's a pretty good team, and has given the Longhorns uh, trouble the past years. Yeah. Uh, Texas A and M at number eleven, Mississippi, Connecticut, and Tennessee, Notre Dame, Clemson, and that's that's the eleven o'clock five eleven a.m. games today. Big matchups too. Yeah, um, number eighteen, Utah, Arizona State. I think that's going to be, a, you know, yeah. a conference game, a Pac, Pac twelve, Pac twelve game. I think that's that's going to be a big hype game. What what time is that game? Uh, one. So that's that's the only one game. Uh, at one thirty, Army and Air Force play. So that's, that that'd be the military bowl. That's uh, it's a Globe Life Field, right? Uh, it's. Sh- it normally is, but it. they may have not scheduled that because the Rangers would have played today game oh, seven. Yeah. yeah. So they may not have scheduled it there. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, because I know that's uh, – is that Arm- Air- Army Air Force? Yeah, Army yep, Army Air Force. Force. Yeah, I think Number they've been playing that at too. Globe Life Field. Uh, that'd be interesting to see where that's played if they play. Maybe they yeah. played it at playing at uh, Choctaw Stadium next door, the old ballpark. If the Rangers did have a game, I don't, I don't know, um, but now it is interesting because you got your first uh, college football rankings, college football playoff rankings last week. Um, and interesting, Georgia's number two, even though they're ranked number one. But they, I, I guess the the committee thought they've struggled when they shouldn't have, even though they've won every game. But Michigan's up there, and Michigan right now is is in in hot water. Obviously, the the cheating scandal we're talking about uh we talked about last week and they had they've had one of their uh scouts quit under all the pressure so something's going to happen one way or the other someone's getting suspended i don't know how bad it's going to be um and it may not be till next season because ncaa investigations go a long time but it's going to be interesting because michigan is in the right now in the college football playoff i mean it's still pretty they still have to play ohio state so who knows they're playing Purdue today, Michigan. Um, we have Oklahoma playing Oklahoma State. It's the last uh, last game of that rivalry as conference opponents. Yeah. Um, Oregon State and Colorado play. That's Colorado's pretty uh, is falling off pretty far, but uh, Colorado State's a pretty good team. So, you know, maybe you know, we we spent the first three four weeks talking about Colorado on the show this season and uh they've kind of they kind of gone fizzled yeah yeah, fizzled gone gone away and um i think there's still a team we're going to talk about in the future yeah Uh, if colorado wins this game maybe they get some of that hype back because oregon state is ranked. oregon is ranked 16 yeah yeah uh number one georgia playing number 14 missouri uh ucla is playing arizona and then the big matchup today the big SEC matchup, LSU at Alabama, number eight, Alabama versus 13, LSU. And those are always big matchups, big SEC yeah. matchups. I mean, you get Bama at LSU, 
facing each other, two big powerhouses. That that's yeah. going to have a lot of college football playoff implications. Um, yeah, both one loss teams. Whoever loses that game, I think, is essentially out. Uh, and the, I mean, it, it works too, because like Texas beat Alabama, so it's definitely in Texas's best interest in the future for Alabama to win to make it look like, hey, we're undefeated. Our one loss is to what Alabama's tenth and rank ranked tenth right now, ninth or tenth? Um, eight. Eight. So right. So right now it looks good that they're. Or I'm sorry. They their one loss wasn't out. Their one loss was to Oklahoma, who's still ranked very high. But they beat Alabama, who is a top ten team in Tuscaloosa. So that helps them because, you know, Texas really still wants Oklahoma to keep winning. Or they just lost, but they keep winning. Take stay a top team. Yeah. So you say, hey, this one loss was a last second loss. Uh, on a neutral field to a top 10 team. And then, but you also have, Hey, we beat a top 10 team in Alabama. Um, who that's their only losses to Texas. Yeah. So I think that that has a lot of implications, obviously, because Alabama and LSU can make it to the college football playoff and they're both top ranked teams. Uh, but they've been beaten by and beat by other team and beat other teams that uh, are here in the top 10 that, have a chance to make the college football playoff. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for uh, tuning with us today, letting us get you ready for your sports weekend. Uh, a little bit different layout here with the boys being over, over there in Galveston, but um, hey, thanks for thanks for tuning in and be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you liked us. If you didn't like the show, hit the like button twice. Um, until next time, guys, I'm Ashton. I'm Tony. Go Rangers.